What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Phil Porto, photographer, videographer, and educator. And today on the channel, we are going to have another quick tip. And for today's quick tip, we are going to talk about five tips on how to save time editing. So the reason I wanted to talk about this in today's quick tip is because there's a saying out there that though it's not necessarily wrong, it's really not my motivation. And that saying is save time because time is money. And though money is a great thing, and yes, I want to save money, the reason I want to save time is not necessarily because time is money, but because I want to make memories of my own with my family and I want to spend time with my family and spend time with my loved ones and spend time in my community and enjoying my city. And though I love my job and I love, you know, the art of photography and videography, I don't want to spend all my time in these four walls, always staring at a computer, having to crank out image after image after image or video after video after video. I actually want to enjoy some of my own life. So I hope these five tips can help you guys speed up your process and also help you enjoy your life. And so the first one may seem obvious, but it's not always applied by photographers. And that is do not overshoot. And I understand for people that are newer in the industry, still trying to get their footing and figure out who they are, that the you know, point and spray and, you know, pray and whatever kind of uh, technique kind of helps them figure out how to get things done um, and make sure that they have that, you know, insurance to make sure that they at least caught the image that they were supposed to. Um, but there's a lot of seasoned photographers that still overshoot. And this is so, so time consuming. Matter of fact, sometimes when I'm just the videographer and not the photographer and I'm shooting with somebody, I feel like I'm in a scene from Rambo and it's like a machine gun and their camera is just going off and off and off and I'm just like oh my goodness I'm getting stressed out for them because I know how much time that's gonna take culling the images and trying to figure out which is the best one because you have like 17 versions of every photo with just a minor variation of where their hand is at and so if you overshoot you are going to overcomplicate. Get the image that you need, get the image that's great, um, taking two or three photos as opposed to 10 to 15 photos of the same thing is going to save you so, 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 so much time. And so that is the first point. Try not to overshoot. The second, I talk about being an experienced photographer a lot. And the reason I do is because it actually helps you and your clients in the long run. And so a way to save time in post-production is to do a lot of the work while you're actually shooting. So what I mean by that is make sure that you're doing it as best as you can in camera your exposure, your white balance, making sure that if you see a trash can in the right corner of your image that you go and you move it and you don't just say, oh, I can Photoshop that out. Yes, I'm sure your Photoshop or your Lightroom cloning skills are good enough to remove that, but why waste your time? And if you use five images that have that trash can in the background, that's five images that you now have to spend extra time on getting rid of that trash can when it would have taken two seconds for you to move, walk over, pick up that trash can, get it out of your image, and then take the photo. So doing things in camera is going to save you so much time because you're going to then solely need to apply your preset and just fix little things here and there because the image was already correctly shot. So to save time in post, do it correctly from the get-go. Third, based off of the fact that you shot it correctly, you can do what we do as the Portos and we create a base preset. So. What I try to teach our team to do is shoot things the same way every single wedding. You know, shoot the same kind of color profile and same kind of color tones during prep. Do the same when you're in out, outside or when you're in a reception hall so that I have a preset for each of the team members and all I have to really do is click it and it's pretty much on point. Sometimes based off of situations, the white balance or the exposure might need a little bit of tweaks here and there, 
but since they shoot consistently week in and week out and they have build the, the style that we have as the portos it's a lot easier and a lot less time consuming for me to edit each team members collections because I've been able to build that base preset so having a preset is great whether it's one that you've created or one that you have found online that works but if your shooting style varies every single time and your white balance is all over the place or your um, technique is a little bit different every single wedding then that preset's really not going to help you because it's actually going to throw you off a little more because you're then going to have to figure out okay how do i get back to that look from that previous wedding so shooting consistently and having that base preset is going to save you so much time so do that and it'll truly truly help you speed up the process so fourth oh my goodness i wish i wish i wish that somebody would have told me about this program when i got started so the worst thing um as much as i love lightroom one of the worst things is having to put your images into lightroom to then call them it takes so much time i remember there were times where i would come home put my cards in and I would wait until the morning because I knew it was going to take that long for it to read all the images so that I can call them. And then calling was so annoying because you had to wait for each preview to show up and that was such a lengthy process. And I've always had top of the line Macs, not because I'm big baller money Phil, but because I used to work for Apple. So I've always gotten that 25% off. So I would get that, you know, killer decked out MacBook Pro or iMac for the same price as what people were paying for it on the floor. And so still having friends that work for Apple, I've been blessed to kind of still reap those rewards. So thank you if you're watching. Um, but that was always a frustrating thing, especially with a decked out MacBook that I would have to wait so long to be able to like see my images and pick my images. And then I heard about Photo Mechanic. And oh my goodness, my mind was freaking blown. This program is so incredible and has saved me hours and hours and hours of my life. So if you've never used Photo Mechanic, I'm showing you right now a little bit of what this program does. So it creates little smart previews that are high res and it's pretty instantaneous. So you see it immediately and then you're able to quickly call your images. And then I only then take those called images and import them into Lightroom and that too winds up being instantaneous. So if you've never used Photo Mechanic, I highly encourage you to. I'm going to put it in the link of this description because I really feel like every photographer needs to have Photo Mechanic in their life. Um, it will change the way you edit and it will free up so much of your time, which is crucial. And then the last one. This might give me some dirty looks. You know, I'm lucky that I'm not with you while you're watching this video, judging me from afar. Um, but I'm going to say it because I used to be completely against this idea until I had a wife and son who really wanted my time and I really wanted theirs. And this is something that, like I said, I frowned upon and you might, but hear me out. Hire somebody. Whether it's bringing someone onto your team or even outsourcing the images, it is worth it. There are some really, really great outsourcing companies. Um, one of them that I know of personally, I don't use them, but I know friends that do, is the Image Salon. Um, and then I know that you know outsourcing can get a bad name because you have so many like photo retouchers that have seriously bombarded every photographer um, on Facebook and Instagram. Like, hey, check out what I do. I'd love to hire you. Let me, you know, be your outsourced you know, editor, and that is frustrating. Yes, I understand that. But outsourcing may be a good option for you, as long as they are able to create that same look that you have given them. Matter of fact, our team has talked about outsourcing for people and creating a brand called Same Team so that it feels like we're on your team and we help you, you know, edit your photos. Um, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but it might launch sometime this year. But even hiring someone onto your team. So me personally, 
I ended up training two people on our team to be able to give them an extra source of income and also free up some of my time to run the other things in the business that really need my time. And so I create a, a base preset for each collection and they pretty much just duplicate that image over and over and over and over and over and over and then make the tweaks that they need to make. So outsourcing or hiring someone will also save you so much time. So I didn't want to go too long in this video because like I said, it is a quick tip. But if there's certain things that you want to ask or certain things that you want to know more about when it comes to saving time or how to actually shoot it correctly in camera or anything like that, please leave me a comment and I would love to help you guys out. This has saved me so much time and has allowed me to make so many memories with my son, so many memories with my wife. And honestly, I love, I love my couples. But my son is cuter than any groom I've ever shot and my wife is hotter than any bride I've ever shot. So I would rather be looking at them for hours and hours a day than looking at a computer screen. So if you feel the same way, apply these tips, let me know how they help you. And until next time, God bless you guys.